Welcome fellow Toastmasters and guests. This meeting of online presenters has now begun. Guests, please know that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current or former active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six Toastmasters official speeches delivered during one of our club meetings. Or alternatively, if you have substantial relevant presentation experience, you may apply for membership after demonstrating your abilities in a two to three minute speech delivered during one of our club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to approval by the members of our club. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure it shows your name and role if you have one. Right click and select rename to do so. We have members and guests from many countries throughout the world. Thus, as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note that we will be recording the meeting. Your video and audio contribution may be used for club marketing purposes. Also, please mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Please welcome our club president, DTM, Andrew Byrne. Good evening, everybody, or good morning if you're in that part of the world. Today, we have another great meeting scheduled for you. I'm looking over the program. It looks like pride is the theme for today. And the word of the day is one that I have not used often or previously. And that word, I'm trying to find which page it's on here. The word of the day is braggadocio. And we know many politicians that use braggadocio in their daily routine, together with lying, fibbing, stretching the truth, or avoiding the truth whatsoever. So the one thing that you don't want to do is be braggadocious. And that is the word of our day. Back to you. Thank you, Andy. And I would like now to introduce the Toastmaster of the day, Mike Woodall. Welcome, right. Mike. Uh, thank you, Carolina, for such a, a, a wonderful opening. And, uh, and thank you to the uh, Sergeant at Arms to uh, take, doing their part and making sure there's a, we have a successful meeting. Um, and thank you, presiding officer. My fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, welcome to Online Presenters Toastmasters Club, the world's greatest online communication and leadership program. To our guests, I'm in hope that we demonstrate to you how a typical online presenters Toastmasters meeting works to help you understand what we do and why we do it. To help answer the question, what's in it for me? How do we dive even deeper than before inside of ourselves to find our voice, to develop the courage to stand so that we are capable of communicating our message, your message, whatever that message may be, so that others get it. Through this new and ever-changing online communication technology, if this is what you seek, inside an environment that is a safe place to fail and not wanting to sound braggadocious, then online presenters is the right place for you. Let's get on with it, shall we? You know, it takes a tremendous team to ensure a successful online presenters meeting. Our grammarian, grammarian is Sarah Idahan, DTM. Sarah, could you please give us uh, a, a brief, a one minute or less uh, explanation of your role and please include the value one receives when they take on the role that you're doing tonight. Thank you, Toastmaster Mike. 
I will be the grammarian tonight. And as a grammarian, I will be listening for the word of the day. One value of being the grammarian is that you sharpen your listening skills because you're gonna to have to be listening throughout the meeting for the word of the day. You're also gonna be listening for good grammar, exceptional grammar, similes, metaphors, and so forth. All of it helps us to be better speakers, better listeners, better presenters. And that's what the grammarian does in every meeting. Back to you, Toastmaster Mike. All right, thank you. Our off counter is Joni Renee Laidlaw. Now, I do not see her name, on the screen. So as I move to the next. She's in the middle with a pride badge behind her. Now, team, there she is. Oh, Joni. Okay. Could you please take a minute and just let us know what your role is all about and please include the value that is received by taking on this role. Have you ever been bored in a meeting while people are being braggadocious? Well, here's a way to humble everyone, including yourself. Start counting on. Just kidding. It actually helps to enhance your active listening skills. We have to listen to the, uh, the pauses, the sores, the but, the and, the you know. And today at Online Presenters, we're going to do it with a twist. We will be adding the comparison of artificial intelligence with Udly to see how well we did with our ah, back to you, uh, our master. All uh, right, thank you, uh, Joni, uh, for that. Our timer this evening is coming to us all the way from Tokyo. Toru Maruyama, DTM. Can you please explain your timer role to us? No, oh, thank you very much. As a timer, I'll show you the passage of time by changing my screen. For example, in prepared speech, you'll see green screen at five minutes, yellow, six minutes, and red, and seven minutes. And I'll show you, continuously show you red uh, when you um, even uh, exceed your time. So be careful. So. Uh, in each category, there is a protocol. So you already know. So be aware of your time. And uh, when you see the red card, wrap up your speech as soon as possible. That is my recommendation. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Toru. Our vote counter for this evening is, uh, everyone knows her, Carolina Ramirez, SR5. Can you please explain your role? Yes, sure. I will put a link on the chat on the chat and you will vote for your favorite prepared speaker or table topic speaker or evaluator. And I will give you I will announce the winners at the end of the meeting. All right. Back thank to you, you, Mike. Thank you, Carolina. And our watcher for this evening is none other than our best watcher we have, David Carr, DTM. Please explain your role, David. Well, I have to steal from Jim Barber because it's a good description. The watcher is sort of the visual grammarian of the meeting. Uh -huh. So we want to see how you use the visual language that's available to us here, work within its limitations, take advantage of this little box as best you can. And I'll be remarking on use of any visuals or body language in your, spe your speeches. All right, David, thank you. What a, what a good explanation, even though you did seal it. <laughs> uh, our chat monitor is going to be Donna Knight. Donna, can you please let us know about your role? Thank you, Toastmaster Woodall. I am the second thief for the evening because I do like the idea of the visual grammarian, because I'm looking at Toastmaster Smolinke's chart and he's using all that he has in language, the quotation marks to recognize our guest this evening, Grace. And so whatever you write in the chat, that which is exciting, that which is a quotation that we should use another time, 
we I will be sharing it with you because sometimes we get a little bit busy with what we're doing. And so I will highlight those with pride later. Back to you, sir. All right. Thank you, Donna Knight. And that is our team. As I told you coming into this, it takes a tremendous team to put on a Toastmasters meeting. Let's give the team an applause. Moving into the presentation portion of the meeting, we now have our prepared speeches. Andre Smolinko is our first speaker. He's working from Mastering Fundamentals Project, Level One, Engaging Humor. His speech title is Joys of Being a Single Dad. In this speech, Andre will talk about five, oh, talk about a few reasons why being a single dad is a positive experience despite some difficulties. Let's give Andre a warm OP welcome. I am a single dad. And it's challenging. True, probably it's one of the hardest things I have ever done in my life. My son is 11 now, and my daughter is 15. And so, well, indeed. Uh, it looks like I'm the only important person in their life. I didn't choose that to happen. And it has not always been like that. Well, the thing is, I met my wife a while ago, year of 2000s. Mm, Italian bella donna. I met her in a pub in London. Of course, where else there could be? Most romantical city on earth after Venice. I was a bartender and so she was a waitress. And it was one of those love stories. It clicked straight away when we just saw each other. We fell in love and we got married after about six months going out and having fun. We stayed together for 13 years. Unfortunately, our relationship didn't work out and we, we decided to go for divorce. It wasn't amicable at all. It was one of the hardest experiences that not only I, probably most of the people will ever have in their life. At the same time, despite the obvious problems, there were some amazing joys of being a single dad. Huh. We had joint custody for children. So they spend one week with their mom and then another week with me. Well, one week I could totally concentrate on being a full-time dad, taking care of them, preparing breakfast, bringing them from school and telling them off on being naughty. The other week, I was a player. I had the all week for myself, nightclub, discus. And then, of course, I still managed to run my business, putting up a nice suit and going out, knowing I have a week for myself. Mmm, what a joyful time it was. It didn't last that long. It just lasted until that moment that last year, my children's mom decided it was enough for her. So she packed up her things and went back to Italy. For about a year, I've been a single dad full time. According to the statistic, I'm not the only one single dad in the UK. Interestingly, about half of the families with children who live in the UK right now, or who were born, the children were born in the year of 2000s, they live at least with one parent who is not their biological parent. It means the rates of divorce in the UK is much, much higher than in the rest of the Europe. And it brings some challenges and problems at the same time. According to one of the statistical researches that been regularly conducted by the UK government, out of 8.2 million families in the UK, about 23%. So every two people out of 10, they 
brought up by a single parent families? Well, yes, there are some statistics. They, in a way, warming for me because I'm not the only one. More and more people going through the same difficulties. On the other hand, there are really some joys in being a single parent. For example, a joy number one, wake up and bedtime. You see, when I wake my children up about 7.30 in the morning, it's always a challenge. Oh, dad, I don't want you to wake up, not again. And you know, all those usual family quarrels. And then of course, I force them. Even once I drag my daughter out of her bed and put her in a cold shower. She will never forget that. My son is a bit more sensible. He listens to me most of the time. Waking your children up in the morning and then taking them to bed. There is one thing that all parents will never, ever change for nothing else. Joy number two, love is all mine. There is no one to share it. I am the greatest dad in the world, and I demand my children to tell me that when I forget. Well, yes, I like them to say it. Otherwise, no pocket money. Well, you know, it works one way or the other. Enjoy number three. I'm still attractive man for single moms. It's something that I almost forgotten about, but then you know, here and there, I still put up my nice suit, get shaved and go out. And this is what I get, the looks of the nice ladies. You see, there are quite a few things and challenges that can happen in a single dad's life. But overall, I think that humor is absolutely crucial. Without sense of humor, my fellow Toastmasters, there is no way I would be able to manage my family day-to-day -day business. And it brings some fruits. For example, my daughter, she is 15 and she does um, health and social study. She wants to be a social worker. So the other day she came back to me saying, dad, congratulations, you're 45. You're going through the period in, in your life where you should start saving and thinking about nursing home. I was, well, thank you. All them years of joy in bringing you up and from scientific points of view, this is why I am right now. My son, as I said, is much more sensible. So what he does, he uses my Ukrainian accent when he wants to tell me off. He goes like, hey, come on, dad. You better give me some money. Otherwise, I will not love you. Never, never. So what do you think about that, my old man? And I just respond in the same way. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow sauce masters, of course, being a single dad is hard the thing that anyone could do. At the same time, with love, with care, and a pinch of sense of humor, anyone can overcome any difficulties in life. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics. My, my Mr. Sorry, say, <laughs> Mike, back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Andre. You know, point number three there, uh, sound uh, like he could have used the word of the day, braggadocio, being good looking and, and for all of the single moms in the world. <laughs> that was good. Uh, our next speaker uh, for speaker number two position is, uh, is um, oh, Graham Karens. Today, Graham Cairns is going to show you some of the resources that are hidden away in projects you may not have even considered. There are a sequillion, million electives available in Toastmasters Pathways, paths. So many, in fact, that you may not know what's available. Using little known resources from Toastmasters Pathways projects, Graham Cairns is our second speaker. Let's give Graham a big warm welcome. 
Hey. Applause for Graham. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters. I'm not sure whether Grace is a Toastmaster or not, but either way, she's a welcome guest here today. I'm looking around this screen and I can see the letters DTM appearing next to a number of people's names. For those who aren't familiar, DTM is Distinguished Toastmaster. But can I ask a question? How many of you have completed a DTM in Pathways? That is the new version of DTM. So uh, we've got three or four. Great. You guys are going to know what I'm talking about. How many have never even thought about getting a DTM? I mean, you know, that's 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 not what I joined Toastmasters for. All right, fair enough. Most people, when they join Toastmasters, they join because they want to learn how to speak. They want communication skills. In fact, the old slogan of Toastmasters used to be better listening, better thinking, better speaking, because you had to do them in that order. You had to learn to listen, and then you learn to think, and then you then you learn to speak. Well, these days, the slogan, the tagline is where leaders are made. And what I'm going to talk about today are some of the resources that you may not know are available to you as leaders. You see, the thing is that there are so many electives in Pathways, you may not ever do some of the projects, you may not even think about doing some of the projects, and so therefore you would not know what is available in those projects. Let me give you an example. I'm just going to share my screen at the moment, and you should at the moment be seeing Manage Projects Successfully. You can see that. This is a level four project, which is available either as a required project in some paths or as a, uh, an elective in others. And the purpose of managing projects successfully is, well, duh, the name is on the tin. It's a path to managing a successful project, which begins with enthusiasm and all those sorts of things. You learn to recognize your strengths as a project manager. Now, who here has ever thought about being a project manager? Yeah, I didn't think I'd see many hands going up. Oh, all right. Carolina is good. You can do all my planning from here on through. Okay, Carolina, it's your job. No, seriously, one of the things that we need to learn to do as a leader is learn how to lead by example, but how to manage projects. There are some good projects for good practices for project management. You've got to know your stakeholders. You've got to build rapport with everybody who's involved in your projects. You've got to maintain communication, plan meetings. Look, I'm not going to go through this project because if you're interested, do it. But what I am going to show you is one of the resources that's available to you, even if you never do this project. If you just go to this project and download the My Project, you'll get an evaluation form. No, evaluation forms, we see those all the time. We don't need to worry about those. But what you'll also find are other resources like a project plan sheet. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried planning a project, but you know how they say if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Well, quite frankly, if you fail to plan, if you fail to plan your plan, then you plan to fail your plan. And you, look, we can go around in circles. But here is a resource which is available in this project, which doesn't have to be used for this project. It can be used for any project you are involved in. It's a project plan outlining the name of your plan, the purpose of your plan, learning how to allocate and decide what resources are required, working out how to budget what is required, writing down the key deliverables before you begin your project, writing down the milestones that you need to achieve your project, and then, of course, notes. That's a really useful little resource in a single page, and it is available to any Toastmaster whether or not they're going to do this project. There's the project team outlining who is going to be on your team, who is going, what their delegated tasks are. Because, you know, we can all have teams, but if we don't actually delegate tasks, if we don't actually say, you will do this, I will do that, they will do something else, then things don't get done. So this project plan, which is just one of the resources available in the Manage Projects Successfully path, is one that you might like to consider because it is a particularly useful resource. Let's now if I can get this thing to move out of my way, I just have to move my, uh, I'll have to stop sharing the screen for a moment, because unfortunately, I couldn't hit the right button then. Let me go back around and share my screen again. This time, leading in your volunteer organization. Has anyone done the leading in your volunteer organization project? 
Has anyone even thought about doing the leading in your volunteer? Of? Yeah, well, I gather a few of us would. But here's the thing. Once again, the project itself is valuable, but the resources which are available in this are even more valuable. You may not have ever considered, for example, what is involved in a succession plan. But the first thing that any good leader should do is work out who's going to replace them. If you get run over by a bus, if your term of office is over, whatever, you need to work out a succession plan so that you're not left as all too happens at this time of year with uh, area director saying, I've got no idea who's going to replace me as area director, with club president saying, I've got no idea who's going to step up and be president next year. This resource, which is part of this project, leading in a volunteer organisation, helps you get set in your head how to access a succession plan so that it will work for you. Another resource that is really useful, that's the leading in volunteer, uh, leading in your volunteer organizations. Another one that most of you won't have considered doing is the Distinguished Toastmaster project, because, well, as I say, that's, that's a project that you've got to achieve certain things before you can even get this. Most of you cannot access this resource, this Distinguished Toastmaster project. You have to have completed one full level of a path, uh, sorry, one full path and at least three levels of a second path. Now, I don't wish to be braggadocious, but I do have some pride in the fact that I have in fact completed or am are completing uh, all 14 paths. So I'm just one of those uh, high achievers. I'm working on my Distinguished Toastmaster program under Pathways. Again, you can't get this resource until you have met those criteria that I just outlined, but I will be putting into the chat a couple of resources from here because I think they are too valuable not to make them available. Those resources are these, and I see the red light, so I'm going to have to be quick on this. Those resources are these. You have an ethical framework. If you're planning something, you need to work out an ethical framework of how to do it so that you not only achieve your purpose, but that you do so in an ethical way. This goal setting worksheet is gold, setting down the long term goals, the medium term goals and the short term goals and going back to and referring to that all the way through the projects that you are working on your goal task list. How am I going to accomplish each of these? midterm, short-term or long-term goals? What are the specific tasks and the specific time frame that I'm going to use? And then using this project plan overview. As I say, these are resources which are simply too valuable not to make available to everyone. So I will be extracting those from the DTM project and putting those into the chat for you. Please use these resources. There is so much available that most of us don't know about because we don't do these projects. I'm well over time, so I'm going to shut up. Mike, it's all yours. You're still muted, Mike. Uh, thank you. I guess it goes on mute automatically. The, uh, I really enjoyed your presentation. I needed that particular project for a nonprofit group that I'm putting together a team uh, to do a project. So uh, thank you very much for that. I really appreciated it. Let's take a moment to evaluate our speakers and vote for best speaker. Let's not whitewash the evaluations. Attaboys are important. Don't get me wrong. It helps the swagger. But let's not cheat these men out of some things they could do to improve. Remember their intentions are to become great presenters, help light their path. Let's take a second. Next, we have the table topic session. To lead us, our topics master, is Sunny Fridge, DTM. She has until 38 minutes after the hour to complete her table topic session. Sunny Fridge, what say you? 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. I don't want to be a braggadocio, but wow, I have the power at least for a quarter of an hour. Thank you very much. I am Table Topics Master today. I'm excited that I want to do a little twist tonight. I want to use a Udly game. Some of you know already that Udly is the artificial intelligence powered speech coach that gives analytics that help you become a better communicator, a better speaker. And today I want to share some things with you and hopefully some of you will volunteer. I'm gonna share my screen. And I'm gonna to go to games. So here is where I get a chance to help you play a game. It's called spin a yarn. Here's how you play. I'll pull up these instructions. You're going to get a topic to speak about. Now, spin a yarn helps you maintain your concentration while you're speaking as you get some distractions thrown your way. This time, it will be prompts, words on the screen. Your goal is when you see a word come on the screen, you need to add it into your story as you spin a yarn regarding the question that you are asked. I'm going to keep it on medium and I'm going to give you one minute. Mr. Timer, you really have a break right now because the timer goes automatic, but you can still just make sure that we're doing the right thing. When it ends, you will see that you will have hits, misses, and a score. So if you don't get all of the words, you'll get a little subscribe, um, excuse me, subtraction and we'll have a winner when it's all said and done. So again, you get a topic to speak about, the prompts pop on the screen, you incorporate them into your story, and you score a point for every prompt you include in your story. So here we go. I need a volunteer. I think that we can turn off the camera, but as long as they hear your mic, it will go. So who's gonna raise their hand and volunteer? Do I have a virtual hand raised? Okay, Joni, thank you so much for volunteering. You're being voluntold. Joni, are you ready? I am ready. Okay, perhaps we can spotlight Joni so that we can all see her as well. And I'm going to mute myself because usually it helps a bit. All right, Joni. So here we go. I'm going to mute myself. Are you honest or not? Why or why not? I think I'm on it. Brutally so, and I had to learn how to not do it. Being around persons in a business sphere who have their own language and knowing that you're around people who deal with entrepreneurship, some things just seem like an explosive version of what you're saying if you come out with just the bells and whistles of what language is stated normally. For me, the possibility exists that anything can actually happen. I mean, in Jamaica, I say braggadocio, but there I see braggadocio. You learn something new every day, especially in how you speak. And because of that, I tend to not have a very skinny vocabulary. You're muted. Let's give Joni a hand. I heard her say at least three words. So Joni, you had at least three hits. So I would say that you had six misses. You had not. You had nine opportunities. You did three. So um, you you did three. So your score is three. You had six misses. I so think, Sunny, you're Sunny. I think you're going to have to leave your microphone on for Udly to hear the responses. I'll try, I'll try it that way. Thank you so much. Joni, thank you for showing us how it's done. Now let's get another volunteer. And I can't see everybody, but Graham looks like he says, why not me? So Graham, let's try it again. We're gonna play again, stand by, and I'll ask you the question. Sell someone on why they should read your favorite book of all time. When you're reading, the interest that is generated is really quite extraordinary because it allows you to develop 
names of all sorts of things, names of places, names of stories that you're going to. I mean, the texture of a good book is that it incorporates you into it. You simply, you get so so heated up, the temperature rises as you try to go through the book. Perhaps it's a spy novel. They're amongst my favourite uh, novels, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's science fiction. Maybe it's, oh, I don't know, perhaps a monkey playing a kazoo. Why would a monkey playing a kazoo be so interesting? Because if you shoot them out of a cannon at a spy, the temperature will raise so much that they turn into tacos. And everybody likes tacos and everybody likes tacos in books. Well, not really. You've got to put them in the refrigerators if you don't eat them, because otherwise they'll go off. But such is the nature of Thank you very much. I think what the problem is, is that I may have my headset on and that could be the problem. So if I take off my my headset and turn off to I believe that the microphone will be picked up a lot better now outside of my head so Graham had nine hits and he 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 made them all so right now his score is nine Joni's score is three all right another player please if you raise your hand, you go to the top of the screen. I see evaluator chatty Jim Barber. All right, Jim, here we go. Let's try this again. Let me just check my audio. I have same as system and MacBook, MacBook Pro speakers that will help me and MacBook. Yes, okay, I think this is gonna work. All right, here we go. What's your favorite dish? What is my favorite dish? What an incredibly good question. The effect that it has on me when you ask that question is phenomenal because I can feel it from my toes up to my wrist. Everything just tingles with anticipation. My well-being rises to stratos no, stratostophic levels. Ah, I'm, I'm not being able to talk tonight like I want to. It's a bunch of baloney. I would really like to come down like hard metal. That's the kind of thing that I want to do. Instead, it's rather ethereal, like a cloud. It's, it's not the thing that I want to do. And the problem is, is that I'm in Florida, and so we are constantly concerned about alligators. I'm also concerned about the clock, because I'm almost running out of time, and I don't want to answer to my creator, so I'll turn it off at this point. All right, let's give him a hand. It looks like we made some, we learned something in, in the process. So Jim, you had eight hits and one miss. So wonderful. Thank you so much. So now, right now, Graham is in first, Jim is in second, and Joni is in third. Another volunteer. Thank you, chat monitor Donna Knight. Here we go, stand by. We're gonna play again, unmute. All right, we're ready and the best thing about my neighborhood. Oh my goodness. I cannot hear any noise now. If there was a sound, the shock on my system could not take it because I would have to communicate with the entire community in order to get them to be quiet. And the beautiful thing is of all the people in our group, there are the police officers and boy, do they respond in time. We don't have to beat drum to get them here. We just say the word and they respond. That's a good thing to say and a good price to have in the group because it means then that we don't have to worry about any surprises taking place or anyone responding too long and beating the drum. I will bow to their service because they really do a very good job. It's not about lip service or braggadocious. I'm really talking about the truth that is happening. We can have any party, any carnival, and people are comfortable and safe. All right, eight hits and one miss for a score of seven. Way to go, way to go. All right, we still have time for a few more. Let, and we'll have a runoff between the top two and we're gonna up the ante. We're gonna make it a little bit harder. We'll put a, a higher level. All right, let's see, anyone else like to go? Let's, uh, oh, Angela Heath. All right, stand by. And what's better, being self-employed or employed? I love being self-employed. I've been self-employed most of my life. And it's like, 
it makes me so happy. I love cabbage. I just think about eating a whole big bowl of cabbage as a self-employed person. And I also think about, you know, being self-employed. I can play with babies and powder them up. And being self-employed gives me an opportunity to use metal to beat people on the head with. You know, when I think about being self-employed, I think about all kinds of things, banjos, mozzarella sticks. And I know that that doesn't make a lot of sense. It's like going up to the moon where there is no English there. But that's how happy I am with being self-employed. And my father was always so proud of me. He would play the banjo and tell everybody, all the people, my daughter is self-employed. And sometimes even when I have a cold and I'm sneezing, it's okay because I am my own boss. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Wonderful. I'm not sure about that one miss. I'm going to give you all because I heard mozzarella. So you are now with a score of eight. Um, if, I'm not, if I'm mistaken, please let me know. It looks like you got all of them, to be honest. That so, goes up to nine then. Yes, so she is tied for first place. I think Donna got nine also. Uh, Donna? Donna. Yeah, she got nine. There was one that it says she didn't get, but she did get it. Thanks for keeping me honest. All right, Grace, I see you smiling. We're going to give you a shot. So unmute guest and let's just play. All right, here we go. Unmute so you can be ready. And why is a shoelace so valuable? Wow. Well, I guess it depends on the fabric, <laughs> but with all due respect, I want to think that, you know, several fabrics like paper can be weird if you have that in form of a fabric, but at the same time, you could have some fabrics that can be useful uh, to help you with painting. And sometimes you could use those for developing your work, whatever you're doing, and and toothpaste. I don't know what you do with toothpaste, <laughs> but I think it's fun. <laughs> All right. Help me with the score for Grace, because I think that she had at least one more hit. I think I heard her say banana, if I'm not mistaken. And that would put her up to five hits, if she so. She was supposed to go painting at some point, so I don't know why it didn't okay. catch up. Yes. You know, we're going, um, we're going to figure that out with Udley. We're going to go back to Udley and ask about that. Thank you so much. Is there anybody? Oh, Evie, you're right in my face. So, Evie, it's your turn now. Stand by. All okay. right. Stand by. What would you like to improve about yourself? Oh my goodness, Sunny. So there are so many things I would like to improve about myself, but I'm the kind of person who always comes up with theories about the next thing I can try. And I just look all over the internet, just climbing up the digital scene, just to find these articles that I can use to improve myself. Sometimes I look in the mirror and, you know, I don't like seeing a stranger. So I, I really want to try. And, you know, even if it's something like learning how to play the banjo, I have a ukulele. I don't have a banjo yet, but, you know, maybe one day this girl will have a banjo to. And I, I just really, really like the idea of uh, improving myself. You know, one day I'm going to be old and wrinkly and I just want to, you know, I, I want that meaning. I want to be able to find the words to express myself. And I, I really want to just put, put my boots on the ground and go out there and, you know, try things I haven't tried. And, you know, I, I'm allergic to bananas. So another way I can improve myself is finding more foods that I'm not... <laughs> Oh, okay, no, I said them all. I believe you said them all. <laughs> you got seven. Thank you so much. Okay, now we are going to come to the point that we've got to see who is going to be the champion. So here we go. I see that Graham, Graham has to repeat. I mean, we're going to put Graham up against, I believe it's going to be Jim. Is it going to be Graham and Jim? Did you both get nine? 
I believe so, but hey. Okay. I don't don't think I did. I think Graham needs to go against another first okay. place person. Um, Angela, Angela had nine for sure. So Graham against Angela, I'm putting it up to be hard, which means the prompt will change every four seconds. Stay close to your mic. Try to say the word as it's spelled because it may not rec recognize all the time the variations. All right, so here we go. Angela, stand by. What is the most extraordinary thing that ever happened to me? The most extraordinary thing that ever happened to me was one day I was walking down the street and I saw this big fat toad. And it was like crazy because the toad was quoting Shakespeare. I thought I was on some kind of fantasy island. I was so afraid. I was filled with fear, filled with fear. A toad that's talking. And then all of a sudden his friends start throwing a basketball and there was such power in it. I was just like, what is this fantasy island? I saw a bell, I began to ring it because I was like, this is crazy. What is the value of this? Why am I here? I came here for the sun. I came to relax. I came to watch Robins, not to deal with toads. But the effect of it was just so fearful. This island was so scary. I just had to find a cushion and scream inside of it because I was on land. But then the next moment, I was in the sea. And the description of this island is just crazy. <laughs> All right. Uh, I believe that she said a couple of more words. So it has her yeah. score at six, she said two, four. Um, look, there's a lot more than that. Ten hits. She had mm -hmm. 10 hits and four misses, but I believe you said sun. Didn't you say sun? Or at least yep. one had, other. had sun, had toad about four times. Okay. Uh, so had basketball instead of baseball. But yeah, you said yeah. the wrong sport. So we're going to add 12, 10 hits plus two. So now the score to beat is 10 plus two. Well. 12. <laughs> so here we go. Graham, stand by. What's your favorite food? Oh, there is no doubt that my favorite food is scrambled eggs. I will tramp all over the place to get scrambled eggs because I have a microphone here to tell you why I like scrambled eggs. It gets caught in my mustache, I admit, which is not a good thing. That's actually quite a tragedy, but I still don't care. I love scrambled eggs. As they pass my lips, I think, oh, scrambled eggs, you are the development of uh, culinary delight. I'm going to go to the cemetery having eaten scrambled eggs. I don't care if they're plastic tasting, if they come in a loaf, it doesn't matter. I once came out of a coma wanting scrambled eggs. True story there, I'll explain that later. No, I'm not going to squirrel out. That is in fact true. I have the memory of a goldfish, but I do remember wanting those scrambled eggs as I came out. I didn't want bananas. No, that was a conglomerate. I wanted scrambled eggs because that's that's an <laughs> all righty and you just did i think you did you say robin it says that your score is 12 which would make it a uh, tight score uh, i i think i'll i'll take whatever i got it matters all not right. tight score is good well done <laughs> right yay i would just say that we did a really really good job let me stop sharing and i'm going to stop Udly so that I can remind myself of something I have to do later. But as you can see, this can be a fun game because you get distracted in life many times and it may not be words on the screen, but someone's in front of you while you're talking, they're looking at their phone or they'll throw you a question that you didn't have time to prepare for. If you play this game and Udly is a free app, I'll put the link in the, in the chat so that you can sign up and practice on your own. There are many people who have put the level up to really monster and they are like, the words are just coming fast. And if you can try to keep your train of thought with what the theme is, what the question is, you'll actually train your brain as well. So I want to just say thank you very much to everyone. I wish I had written down what your questions were. I'll remember to do something like that in the future when I wrap up but I'm going to turn it back over to our Toastmaster of the day. Again, it's been a pleasure and congratulations. You're all winners. And I'm not oh. being a braggadocio. <laughs> oh, you had to squeeze that in. Yeah. You know, that was one of the best table topic sessions I think I've been a part of or witnessed in, I would say forever. 
that was fun, engaging. And whenever you can engage the person that you call upon mm -hmm. and they can actually go deep with the question or, or what have you, uh, that is what the table topic session is all about. And you knocked that out of the park, Sonny. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, you know what? We all are learning. And I learned now, don't have my headsets on. And also what I learned when I was practicing is that when you see about eight seconds, you can actually try to wrap up whatever the question is. And within the last two seconds, you'll be lucky if it hears you. That's what I've learned. So if you want to learn to beat the clock, those are a couple of the tips. And so I, I hope to hear, maybe we'll have a run-a-thon or a, a spin a yarn -a thon one day. Well, you did, you did beat the clock. You were supposed to uh, stop at 38 after. It is now 36 after. Great job, Sonny. Now this concludes our presentation portion of the meeting. Our general evaluator has been a Toastmaster for 10 years. She has served many roles in her club including vice president of education and president. In fact, she took on the vice president of education role six months into her Toastmasters um, a journey. The best value to date has been the confidence that Toastmasters gave her on her journey toward being a Disney princess. Let's welcome Evie Hartman, CCCL, as your general evaluator. Thank you so much, Mike, for that wonderful introduction. I don't want to be too braggadocious about it, but yes, Toastmasters has given me so much confidence, uh, including to be a professional Disney princess for a little while and do so many other things that I never would have had a chance to do. And part of that was because of evaluations, what I think is the most important part of the meeting. Um, the, the constructive criticism that we give to the people that speak, the people who come here all for the same reason, because we're all a little bit terrified of public speaking and we want to get better, that constructive criticism and encouragement is just so instrumental in building people's confidence. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to get right into the evaluations. Uh, a little bit after that, I'm going to call for some functionaries and evaluate the meeting as a whole. But first, uh, I, evaluating speaker number one, Andrew Smolenko, uh, Sean Forrester. I'm so sorry I didn't get anybody's. I, I'm so, so tired today that I completely forgot to do what the amazing Mike did and get introductions. I will definitely do that in the future because I care about that a whole lot. But for now, I will go ahead and introduce evaluator number one, Sean Forrester. Thank you, Evie, and good evening, fellow Toastmasters. Welcome guests, and especially Andre Schmelenko. So I use a little bit of a different technique for evaluation. To me, everybody is evaluating a different way because we all see things from a different perspective. So I use a formula, T-O-M-E, which is what did your speech mean to me? T is title, O is organization, M is message, and E is execution. So your title, Andre, was joys of being a single dad. I liked that because it allowed us to say, oh, he's going in this direction. He's gonna talk about his personal life. He's gonna talk about his family. I was intrigued by that. I wanted to hear more. So that's a great way of opening up your speech. I really, really, really loved your presentation method, having the points beside you. I might've made them slightly smaller because they were large compared to you and the scenery behind you, but the points were simple, direct, easy to understand, and really enhanced your speech. I loved the fact that you went to the top three benefits of being a dad. That's something we learn in Toastmasters is to boil things down into threes or twos or fours or whatever it is. And that was really, really exciting for me. And finally, I think from an execution standpoint, your pacing was awesome and your pauses were really, really good. It allowed us to absorb the information in your tail and to think through what you were trying to tell us. So all of those were wonderful things couple of things that I might have suggested that you work on. First of all, the message. The message I extracted from it, whether it was right or wrong, was anyone can do anything difficult in life. And I think that's an okay message, but it didn't come out very strongly throughout the presentation. And one of the things you want to do with your audience is have them come away saying, wow, I really love that speech. 
How can I use that in my life? What can I take from that speech and examine in my life to maybe make it a little bit different? It doesn't have to be directly correlated to your story, but the audience wants to take a message home and say, that's relevant for me. How can I use it? How can I benefit from it? So you might want to strengthen the message, either the wording of it or how it's portrayed through your message. Number two is, this was your second speech from the evaluation and feedback project, you told me. I didn't hear anything about how your first speech went and what it is that you were trying to overcome. And so if you'd said, you know, I gave this speech a while ago, or I gave a different speech and it had this message, and here's what I'm improving, then it would have helped me to gain better clarity about how you've improved yourself in your speech. And then finally, the introduction, while I like the title, use the introduction in a better way. You've got about a minute. It's your time to be presented before you say word one. And it's a really crucial way of setting yourself up before you walk into the speech. Otherwise, it was a really, really wonderful speech. I learned a lot about you. I learned about the benefit of being a single father. And I look forward to hearing more. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you so much for that wonderful evaluation. I really, uh, I really enjoyed that. And I, I look forward to uh, evaluating that evaluation a little bit later. For now, uh, evaluating speaker number two, Graham Cairns is our evaluator to Mr. Jim Barber. Unmute yourself. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator, my fellow Toastmasters, our guest Grace, so glad you're here. And especially, of course, Toastmaster Graham Cairns. Graham, this was from the Persuasive Influences Path, a presentation from the Persuasive Influences Path. The, it's the first of the evaluation and feedback projects. Now, the problem is, Graham, of course, that I evaluated you last week, and I've evaluated you many times over the last number of months, and so I don't really want to repeat myself. You are a verbal virtuoso. I don't, I know you don't <laughs> like to be braggadocio, so I, I'm not going, I'm going to say it for you. You are a virtual virtue, so you're, you are verbally unmatched in the club. You just have a terrific radio voice. You are wonderful on camera. Your on-camera presence is, is professional, unmatched. So what I'm going to do, rather than going through all those things, is give you one thing that I especially liked, and then one suggestion for something to do better. Uh, perhaps. My thing that I really liked about what you did, you asked several times for people to give you feedback by raising their hands or something like that, which is normal. People do that frequently. What they don't do necessarily is what you did do, which is to summarize what you saw. You said, oh, Carolina raised her hand, or I see several people have indicated they're raising their hands. This is important, not for us, but for people watching the replay on video, because when they're watching the replay on video, they're seeing you in speaker mode. They're not seeing the gallery view. And so they don't know if everybody has been raising their hands or if only a few people have been raising their hands. So it's very important for every speaker, whenever they ask the audience for feedback, to summarize what they see so that people watching the replay will know what they're talking about. That was a very good thing. Now, the suggestion for improvement, and I want to stress this very clearly, this is not a criticism because you incorporate, you were going to do this as a tech tip. You pivoted at the very last minute, and provided as a presentation instead. So there was just no way that you could do this. But if you were going to do this again as a standard presentation, this is what we saw. And you can see the problem here. Graham Cairns, the star of the presentation, is this little tiny square up at the very top of the screen while you're talking about the content, which is in the middle of the screen. And again, you didn't have a lot of time. This is what you had to do. But try to incorporate your picture as part of the content that you're talking about, and it will improve the presentation. But that's it. A great presentation. Looking forward to your next one. Mr. Madam General Evaluator. 
Thank you so much, Jim. And thank you to both of our evaluators. If you haven't already, please go ahead and submit your votes for both table topics and evaluations. And now I will evaluate the evaluators and then evaluate the rest of the meeting. Um, all right, so Sean, I really like your formula for evaluating, uh, Andre. Uh, uh, T O M E to me, what it means to me. That's that. That's a really cool title, which leads me into uh, title, organization, message, and execution. I really like that because I think it was a very perceptive way to do an evaluation. Because those things really are important, discrete things that we are all working on, but that we usually don't specifically focus on. So I really like that you used an evaluation method that drew attention to some very specific things, encouraging all of us to think about those specific things in the future. It's very important. Uh, Jim, you led with praise. You're so good at doing that. And you pointed out the factors that most people don't do in, uh, in, in the speech that you were evaluating, uh, remembering the constraints of this digital format that we're in and uh, providing a way to encourage her to use, uh, to use a, uh, you know, to, to, to use those in a, a visual way as well as an audio way. Uh, this meeting was wonderful. We started on time. Uh, our speakers were prepared and uh, enjoyable. And table topics, oh my goodness, I cannot say enough good things about the table topic session. Uh, Sunny, that was so cool. That was so much fun. And it was hilarious. I, I'm pretty sure we were all feeling for Graham when Cemetery popped up on that last question about food or whatever it was. That, that was so much fun. I want to do it again right now. <laughs> Oh man, that was really, really fun. Um, amazing meeting everybody. Uh, next time I will definitely uh, have introductions for my evaluators. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, I'm very satisfied with how this meeting went. And now let's go ahead and check in with our functionary roles. All right, uh, our grammarian, Sarah, can you report on that please? Thank you, General Evaluator Evie. Well, we hit braggadocio out of the park tonight. We had 10, 10 uses tonight. We had from Joni, Mike Woodall, Jim Barber, John Forrester, Evie, Grace, Angela, Donna, Jim, Barber, Graham Carnes, Joni again, Sonny, and Graham Carnes again. So fantastic job with using the word of the day today. We had some good language today. We had Descriptive language from Andre, amazing joy of being a single dad. And he also said he was a player. And he used the word statistics warming me as a metaphor. And he had a lot of humor, vocal variety when he was giving his dialogue within his speech. And Graham, he, he told us what the original tagline for Toastmasters was, better listening, better thinking, better speaking. And also, he said, if you fail to plan your plan, you plan to fail your plan. Sonny gave us a little poetry tonight. I have the power for a quarter of an hour. And Sean Forrester repeated the words for us really, 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 really well. He said, really, really, really love the title. Was a really, really exciting speech. The pauses were really, really good. And it was a really, really wonderful speech. Repetitive words with really. Back to you. Generally evaluator. Thank you. So thank you so much, Sarah, for that that very thorough and enjoyable grammarian report. All right, real quick, I want to check in with our timer. Uh, I didn't do that yet. Sorry. Uh, can you let us know if all of our table topics and evaluations qualified? Just want to make sure I'll, I'll check in with the vote counter at the very end, giving them a little bit of time just in case. As for the table topics, uh, everyone spoke one minute, so there's no problem. But as for the evaluator, both are qualified. Uh, the Toastmaster Sheen Forrester, Sean Forrester, three minutes, 28. Uh, Toastmaster Jim Baba, three minutes and 10 seconds. And can I, hmm, do I have to uh, report the uh, prepared speech time? No? Uh, I think, let's see, did we already do that? If you didn't no, already, no. Go, ahead and, go ahead and let us know what those were too. So uh, the speech time of Toastmaster Andres Milenko, seven minutes, 28 seconds. And uh, Toastmaster Graham Cairns, eight minutes, seven seconds. So what we will do, I don't know. So I've Andre seen something. <laughs> Andres was a better speech anyway, so he'd win anyway. But yes, so Andre wins. All right, thank you so much, Tori, for your time or support. 
All right. Next, we have our awe counter, Joni Laidlaw. Thank you, Toastmaster Sunny, for sharing that. And I hope everyone can hear me regardless of the noise in my background. It's always difficult at an advanced club to pick up on our filler words. Andres had a so, and so did Evie. You can think about using instead of, and not say so. There was a sound in Tosasta and her speech, but you can potentially place it as emphasis, and that's what he does. It wasn't an error. I was so busy during table topics trying to see why Udley wasn't hitting the words. Like, I can tell you that, oh, Angela said baseball instead of basketball, and that's why I didn't hit it because my brain went to grammarian. And this is why AI has a better effect affect than human, not to be braggadocious about it. Now, let me get some computerized help to see what happened with our odds during table topic because I know I missed quite a few or it was really hard for me to find it. How did we do, Sunny? I see you picking on it. Let's go with Graham since he was our winner. How did he do for filler words? Three O, he had, you can also see it probably three O's and two us. So he didn't and do too I bad. That. All right, let's try Angela. All right, let's look. And I'm doing a drop down to find that person who was speaking. And Angela Heath, a filler word. She just had five, five. She said like three times and she had two you knows. And I can tell you, I would have missed them. And if you want to flip through quickly, but I think we get the message that my ears wouldn't be as efficient to hit it, but you would be heard. Back to you, our general evaluate. And thank you for the share, Sunny. Thank you so much, Joni. All right, now let's go to our chat monitor, Donna Knight. Let's see. All right. So today, as we look at what we did this evening, I just want to share with you some of the things that came out as we were talking. Some of us decided to use the emoticons. We had some quotations and by car, be proud, but need, no need to be braggadocious. I have an allergy to DTM number two. We had some that were just wonderful. If you did not think of the financial year, Toastmaster Andy had it. I love Smolenko's way of saying, Grace, hi, I'm from Florida. And there are those of us who are part of the members of the community, and so we made sure it was said. Visual grammarian, for those of us who are considering ourselves as the thieves, we were told we're not because it's in the public domain. We had those who were saying, oh, you would not miss it. We got them all. Yes, speaking for people over AI. And of course, Sonny, Table Topics was great. So you have it in writing. You did a very good job. Those were some of the highlights. And of course, those of us who needed a general comment, documents, links, we had them this evening. Back to you, madam. Thank you so much, Donna. OK, two to go. David Carr, our watcher, can you please let us know what you saw tonight? I certainly can. And one of the things I saw is that when our single dad came on to talk about being a single dad, well, he was dressed the part. He's in a track suit with a little bit of a, a beard growing. You're not dressed up professionally like I am. Uh, and so it, it was a humorous speech too. So probably it, because it may also have something to do with the fact that it's after midnight where he is and it's probably been a long day. You make excellent use of the Prezi tool Anybody who doesn't know, Prezi is the, the software he was using to sort of put himself inside the, the slideshow effect. And you had some good visuals in there. I, I, I like the picture of, I, I wrote down murderous ravioli maker uh, as the Italian wife. Now, still, are they make good use of it. I always wonder, you know, what is this visual? adding anything or is it not necessary? And so 
I wondered that a little bit about some of the words flashing up on the screen. There was one point where it came up with a row of statistics and I was like, ah, here we go. He's gonna, it's gonna be on the screen and he's also gonna read them, but actually you didn't read them. So that, that was something that I think is probably a skillful use of, you know, here are some statistics, read them if you like, but I'm gonna go on with my story. But did, did you necessarily need to have the three points of being a single dad of the three advantages of it, did those need to be slides? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hot and cold on that. Again, you, you use it well, it sort of punctuates your speech, but I always wonder is, the, is this just up on screen so he can remind himself where he's in the speech and where he's supposed to say next? And the only thing I will say about Graham's speech was that when you were screen sharing, you have probably a really nice wide monitor. And so we get these big uh, sidebar ears on the thing. Uh, and so probably you could have avoided that by just sharing the specific application. And I actually tried to do some quick research. Apparently there's some way that you can tell Zoom to treat your big monitor as if it was two monitors. And somehow, anyways, there, there, there may be a trick to it that you could investigate if that comes up from time to time. Um, but, you know, for, for the content you were sharing, I don't think it really was a distraction. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you so much, David. I'm going to have to ask you about that uh, about that 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 special uh, screen screen thing that you just mentioned. That that sounds really cool. All right, our very last functionary, our vote counter, Carolina. Can you tell us who was the best table topics of the night? And we'll have a drum roll for the. Uh, well, I guess. We don't have. I I didn't count the best table topics because we had the game of uh, oh right. Joy. <laughs> All right. But okay. I have the best evaluator of the night, and he's Shan Forrester. Woo! And the best prepared speaker is Andrei Smolenko. Congratulations to the winners. Back to you, Evie. All right. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, that concludes my portion of the meeting, and I'll go ahead and return it to the Toastmaster of the day, Mr. Mike Woodall. Thank you. We can't hear you, Mike. Unmute, Mike. How about now? Right. You know, I had probably one of the best experiences as uh, watching a general evaluator move through. Not only was she uh, just knew what she was talking about, she added such energy that made a general evaluator's role so enjoyable and fun for everyone. So I just want to, let's all give her a big round of applause. We're running about a minute behind schedule, so I'm going to just get right to it. It's been an honor um, being your Toastmaster this evening. And tonight was proof that this place, online presenters, is a safe place to fail because I had been a Toastmaster in two years, and you made it easy for me. And having a, a team like what I just had was, wow. You know, there's no place, no test, Toastmasters club I can ever go to that I'm not surrounded by all DTMs on target. And uh, people like Jim Barber and David Carr, the uh, experience they have, it's it have been an honor being your Toastmasters this evening, presiding officer. <laughs>